Bali is a tropical paradise with natural beauty and never-ending adventures. Its beaches, cultural and spiritual scene, food, warm people, and nature is unparalleled, especially compared to the more city lifestyle that I live in Los Angeles. So my friend Annie and I decided to travel all around the island for 10 days exploring to show you some of the top things that you can do in Bali, Indonesia. I'm gonna start the vlogger room and be my official guide. Hello, hello. So we officially both made it to Bali. We just checked into our hotel where we're staying. Well, it's not technically a hotel. What would you call this place? A resort. We're gonna go get some food in Changu. Changu is known for having so many different cafes and we're gonna check out the canteen today. So to get around the island, you hop onto these grab bikes, which if you download the app, it's basically like the Uber, but for motorcycles. And I would recommend starting off with getting some some delicious food or brunch and this is called the canteen save this to your list it's a great spot for inexpensive brunch food Avo toast. And later in the evening for sunset, I would recommend heading over to Tanalot, which is a popular temple in Changu. And once again, you can head over there via a grab bike, or you can also call a grab car too. This is Tanalot. It's a bit cloudy, so we're not really gonna get much of a sunset right now. But yeah, right in front of us is one of the most popular temples here in Bali. And it's very sacred to Balinese people. The next morning, my friend and I did yoga, which I would highly recommend as well since Bali is such a popular destination for yogis and you just feel really good afterwards. And personally, if you're feeling a bit jet lagged, I think that this helps as well. We just finished our yoga session this morning. It was actually really nice, like just stretching our bodies. How was your yoga session, Annie? It was really nice. I feel like my body was super tight. Yeah. And now I feel a lot more relaxed. Now we're just getting some drinks, some smoothies. So I got the same thing that I got yesterday when we arrived. Annie got the matcha matcha. We're now checking out the sauna here. They have like quite a bit of different facilities. They have a gym downstairs. So we just asked them to heat up the sauna. <sighs> And he's gonna jump into the cold plunge now. <laughs> Finished getting ready, we're gonna head out for the day. We're gonna head to Uluwatu, but first I wanna show you guys the quick tour of where we're staying, the room tour. This costs about $65 a night here in Changu. We got this nice hallway here. To the right, we have all of these cabinets, and then you have the bathroom area, our room. So two beds, and then you open up, and you have this nice view of outside. We got this really nice balcony area. On day two, the main site that you'll want to make time for is Uluwatu, which is about an hour and a half drive from Changu via car. Uluwatu is the southern tip of the Bali Island, where there's a temple known for its dramatic clifftop views overlooking the Indian Ocean. And you'll also see some monkeys walking around here on this temple too. These monkeys, more monkeys, they're all following me. And if you can make it for sunset, head over to Karangboma Cliff. It's just about a seven minute drive from the temple and it's arguably one of the best sunset spots with the sun plunging into the waves, dashing against the cliff. After sunset, head back to the temple area for a nighttime kekak fire dance show, which is basically a Balinese traditional art of dance drama performed by many dancers and highlights the art of movement and the art of chant sounds without using any instrumental music. Hey guys, so we just checked out of our hotel this morning and we're heading over to Ubud. Ubud is in the uplands of Bali and is known for its green hillsides and rice terraces and has long been the center of Bali's artisanal traditions and spiritual Life. I'd recommend staying here for three nights and have your first stop be the famous monkey forest. So we just got here to the monkey forest here in Ubud and monkeys are sacred in Balinese culture and I actually heard that the monkeys here will steal your things so you have to be very careful about that. But yeah, we're gonna explore the area a little bit. Can you see? Oh my god. Oh my goodness, there's a baby monkey inside of its mama. Oh, oh goodness gracious. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, there's so there's attacking. Wow. These aren't supposed to be aggressive to like humans or anything, but you should just be mindful of not touching them. Chilling. He's a chiller. He's eating the offering. It's 
So we're now checking into our place here in Ubud. And this place that we're staying at is actually almost just about half of the cost of the first place. So it's about $28 a night. I'll give you just a very, very quick tour just so you can kind of see what it looks like. Ooh, lush greenery. This is our king size bed, showers. Okay, so we just made it here to Tenganuan Waterfall. I'm gonna check it out and hopefully I can get some good drone shots. So it is a new day here in Ubud. We are at the Tekat Sipung Waterfall and what makes this place unique is you're kind of almost in like a cave. You're surrounded by these rock formations, a combination of like the mist and the light rays. So it's pretty cool and it can make for some pretty cool photos. Heading down to see the Kanto Lampo waterfall. To enter the waterfalls, a lot of the entrance fees are about anywhere from like 15,000 rupees to 20,000 rupees, less than a dollar. I see it. <laughs> it was really cold. It was like an ice bath. It feels a little warmer now, but when I first went, it was like pummeling my face. <laughs> Next, head over to the Turta Impal Temple, which is dedicated to the Hindu god of water and is considered one of the most holy temples in Bali. When we arrived, we were greeted by a man who explained to us the water purification process. At each fountain, except for the 1st, 11th, and 12th, you're to repeat the same ritual, which is to fold your hands together, place them on your forehead while you say the word Om three times, and then you cup your hands and gather some water from the fountain to rinse your head and face, and then repeat this three times. And then last, you stick your head under the fountain completely for protection and prosperity. We just finished up at Turta Empul. We did the water purification and gonna find our driver now. He's somewhere around here. So we just got here to the Tagalalang Rice Terrace. This is one of the most popular rice terrace spots to visit in Ubud, but you do want to make sure that you come during the right time of the year when they are actually harvesting and cultivating the rice because actually right now they just kind of pulled out all of the rice and so it's just uh, past sunset now. Another really great time to come would be when it's like sunrise, uh, but I'm not much of a super early, early riser, so if you can't make that, then uh, sunset is always nice as well. Good morning, it is a new day. Today I'm at Ulun Danu Temple. And if you love temples, then this is probably one of the most iconic ones that you can visit here in the mountains of Ubud. Alright guys, so we just got here to the Handara Gate and it really is just a spot to take photos. If you do come here, do know you are going to be waiting in line, but I'll do it to show you guys. Our gate. Um, again, if you do come, expect a lot of people. But yeah, we're now heading off to some waterfalls. And after a long day of exploring and your night with a dinner like we did, we went to this plant-based sushi spot called Zest and it was delicious. So today we're heading over to Giliti Islands. We are at Padang Bay and we're gonna take a boat over to Giliti. It's gonna be like hour and a half boat ride. The Gili Islands are a group of three tiny islands, Gili Trawangan, Gili Mino, and Gili Air. Here you can expect a more laid back beach culture with the main draw of the island being scuba diving and here there are no cars or motorbikes so expect to get around by either horse car taxi, bike or foot. We made it to Gilly T. Got two twin beds here, got a nice table area, TV and we've got our bathroom here. 
And we've got a nice little balcony going on out here as well. Let's go get some food. Yeah, are now with the owner of Copa Cabana. No, it's Coco Co Cabana. Coco Cabana. Oh, it's Coco Cabana. Um, hey, my name's Jesse. I'm from Australia. Built uh, Coco Cabana in 2017, and then been here ever since. So it's kind of uh, it's almost like 9:50 now, and um, we're gonna be heading into more like the town area where it's supposed to be a little more popping and we're taking some bikes and we're gonna bike on over should be about a 15 <laughs> to 10 minute bike ride Billy T is known as the party island so if you're up for that then just grab your bikes and head over to the main area the bars are usually open pretty late or you can just sit and enjoy some live music like we did hello everyone so it is the next morning we just got ourselves some breakfast here at the hotel got this fruit bowl what'd you get Annie <laughs> same thing ready to go so that's really nice on day seven head over to the main town area and get ready to do some snorkeling we are hopping onto our boat here to go snorkeling okay <laughs> Galimino Island. Some people say it's like good for honeymooners, but just finished snorkeling and got myself some watermelon pineapple juice, which is very refreshing. So we're walking down and there's this massive lake bed. Much, much less busy here than in Galiti. A lot more calm, a lot more peaceful. That's pretty much it for Gilimeno. We're gonna be heading back now, hopping back on the boat, off to Galiti. Okay. We're gonna head to Exile Bar. Kind of just in front of it is this really cool swing spot for the sunset. So we're gonna beep beep, ride our bikes on over. Cheers! These are big cups. They're big. Oh, look at that. <laughs> And just like that, two days later, we're now heading out of the Gili Islands. We're going to be heading over to Nusa Limbongan and Nusa Panita. Yeah, we're going to be taking a fast boat over there, so it should hopefully take no more than like around two hours. To first get to Nusa Limbongan, you're going to go in a ferry. And little warning, it can definitely get kind of rocky and scary in the ocean, but you'll make it out of it. My God, I'm literally so on edge right now. This boat is shaking all over the place. We're gonna die on the boat. We actually are gonna die. It's going sideways and everything. So, I love you, ma'am. <laughs> I, I feel awful. We made it off of that boat. I was getting very nervous. I was like, please, don't, please get there safely. Finally here. But let me very briefly, quickly show you um, where we're staying. I believe it was about $45 a night for where we're staying. What it looks like on the outside. Look inside your bed here. That's pretty much it. We haven't really eaten all day, so I think we're gonna get some food and hopefully catch the sunset. <laughs> it also has a pool right in front. So depending on the time that you arrive in New Salem Bongan, you might only have time to do a few things on this first day. So for us, we got an early dinner and then went to the beach. Found this spot called Tropical Juice Corner. We're gonna get some food. We got the avocado juice. Avocado Cheers. Juice. Banana. banana leaf. Banana leaf. Mm. Feasted. So with the very little bit amount of sunlight that we have left, we are now here at Dream Beach and there's some swing sets here, it's really nice.
Good morning, everyone. It is the next day here in Nusa Lembongan. Annie and I are about to get some breakfast here at the restaurant, the villa that we're staying at. And after you finish your breakfast, then I'd recommend exploring the many picturesque spots and beaches. It is hot this morning, and we're at this spot called Devil's Tear. There's some rainbows there. Oh, okay. This is now Sandy Bay, literally right around the corner from Devil's Tear. Water here, it like kind of fades, like an ombre, from like a darker blue to like a very, very turquoise blue. Just made it here to Mushroom Bay. We're gonna go for a little dippy dip in the water. I think Annie's a little afraid to go all the way in. Made it back to our villa, but before we check out, we're gonna take a quick dip in this pool. It was looking pretty nice. Seats here, you can literally just sit and enjoy the view in front of you. We ended up checking out of our hotel at around 12 p.m. and then we caught a boat to head over to the next Nusa Island, Nusa Penida. So we just made it here to Nusa Penida, checked all of our stuff into our new hotel. And after checking in, there are two main spots that I would recommend that you check out. The first being Amok Sunset, which is a really nice sunset spot where you can also grab a bite to eat. Massive view of the ocean in front of you. Got like a tree house up there. This is over here and Mock Sunset are absolutely insane. Literally 360 views of the water around you. This camera is not doing this place justice. You just gotta see it in person. Avocado sandwich here with some mushrooms, some Indonesian beef binding. And once you're done eating, head over to Crystal Bay. Just made it here to Crystal Bay. It's just about 5.42 p.m. So we have about, I wanna say 20 minutes until sunset here. What do you have to say about the sunset? I think for the sun to go through that keyhole right there. Ombre right now. So pretty, it's like cotton, cotton skies. All right, everyone, so it's just about 6.07 a.m. We are walking up to the Killing King. I've been wanting to see this spot. This is like one of the most picturesque spots. I'm excited to see it for the very first time. And this spot can get really, really crowded. So if you want to avoid the crowds, come super early in the morning. I've seen a lot of pictures of this spot, but I think beats it, this view in person. Kalinking was hands down my personal favorite spot and viewpoint while in Bali. So if there's one place that I recommend that you see, I would say this is the place to be. I just made it here to Angel's Billabong. It's not too far from Kalinking, but it's another nice photogenic spot here. Devil's Tear and now Angel's Billabong. You know, one here, one here. Now we're off to Broken Beach. We're gonna um, figure out why it's broken. Maybe we can fix it, says Annie. We found Broken Beach, it's down there. If this video gets 500,000 likes, Annie will jump down. <laughs> figure out why it's broken, Annie. What are your thoughts? Uh, someone just broke the cliff. Something's showing over there. Annie's making jokes. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> She's running. <laughs> like broken road. <laughs> the road it's is so bumpy. bumpy. <laughs> we just made it here to Alo Spa. We're gonna get some aromatherapy massages. We got this beautiful view of the ocean literally right in front of us. Ready for your massage? Very ready. So we're getting our massages now. I'm not gonna film this part. Bye. <laughs> just finished our massage. How, how was it for you, Annie? It's nice. We're heading to the harbor now. And that'll be it for Nusa Penida. Take a boat back to Changu and do some last minute exploring before flying out the next day like we did. Just got here to our last villa here in Changu and we're gonna be leaving Bali tomorrow. So today is our last day. So we're gonna do a few more things for our last day here. Changu is known for its food scene and cafes. So I'd recommend checking out some of the spots that you didn't get a chance to initially. All right guys, so we're here at Motion Cafe. Cool spot if you're into like vegan, healthy food. Track your macros is a pretty good spot, but I really like it because they have a lot of fun little vegan pastries, paleo pastries, paleo brownie, keto yes. lettuce cups. It's a good combo. I would make this. I just made it here to the lawn. We're gonna try and catch sunset here. It's kind of busy here at the lawn, so we're gonna walk on to the beach. And to end 
your Bali trip, treat yourself to some pizza at Luigi's. This is a really popular spot and we had to try it out for ourselves. This place was highly rated by other people that I met here in Bali. Cheers to last night. Any last words? I did not spend enough time in Bali. <laughs> So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and seeing how we spent our 10 days exploring the beautiful islands of Bali, Indonesia. From the waterfalls to the sunsets and beyond, it was truly a dream to travel there. And I hope you get a chance to experience it for yourself too. If you did enjoy watching, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.